In the game of intelligence, there was a time when humans stood unchallenged on the podium of wit and innovation. But as the gears of progress turned, tick, 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 a new challenger has emerged from the shadows. And today we're gonna dive deep into those uncanny moments when our own creations outsmarted us. Welcome to the nine times that artificial intelligence outsmarted humans. Let the digital duel begin. Let's start with one of the defining moments in my lifetime where artificial intelligence took center stage on TV. This was the event where I first remember hearing the word machine learning. In the year 2011, IBM's artificial intelligence system called Watson competed on the game show Jeopardy, and against none other than the two greatest champions of all time, Brad Ruther and Ken Jennings. And unlike the brute force computational methods that Deep Blue used to beat Gary Kasparov at chess, IBM's Watson was designed to handle some very complex questions. And most impressively, these questions were posed in traditional Jeopardy style, natural language. Behind the scenes, the system was using machine intelligence to sift through vast databases of information. This wasn't quite as simple and self-contained as some of the neural networks that power things like ChatGPT, but still, these were artificial intelligence systems that were sifting through all sorts of different types of data and helping rank what the most probable reply was. And Watson really knew its stuff. It could often just buzz in on questions with remarkable accuracy. But what captivated the nation was that this wasn't just like a data place retrieving facts, because the game's format often involved clues that were kind of masked with puns, wordplay, nuances, and a deep understanding of the contextual meaning. Did you know that humans were outsmarted by artificial intelligence when it came to inventing a new antibiotic? Yeah, in a groundbreaking advancement in 2020, scientists use artificial intelligence to explore a vast database of chemical compounds in search of new potential antibiotics. Traditional methods to look through all these compounds was super time consuming and expensive. And it was starting to kind of give back diminishing returns, so a lot of big pharma companies were pulling back. But once this new AI driven approach kind of kicked in, they were like, oh, let's explore the long tail. It's a lot cheaper now. And to train it, the team had to build a model on a data set of molecular structures from thousands of already FDA approved drugs. But once they've shown all these examples to the artificial intelligence system, they said, go out and find other stuff that just works. So it scours this database that has over a hundred million different known molecules in it and then just find something. And once the AI identified this promising compound, they named it HAL. Technically Hallison, but it's from HAL 9000. I don't know why they named it that, it was their choice. So now 2001 A Space Odyssey lives on in antibiotics, and no doubt has saved many, many lives. And not only is it a generally great antibiotic, it's also the only known antibiotic that can fight some antibiotic resistant strains. But it's not just Jeopardy and antibiotics, AI has outsmarted humans in the creative process also. Did you know that AI actually generated an image that won the Sony World Photography Award? That's right, so there is this German artist, he submitted it saying that it was a photo, and he won. Now after he revealed that the prize winning image was actually just generated from artificial intelligence, he decided to politely decline the award. Now it seemed like he was well known in the photography community, so he obviously did lots of photography, but he put out a statement saying I can't accept the award because AI generated art should not go head to head with photography. And with his refusal, he hopes to spur a broader debate about what exactly photography is and what role should AI play in the future of it. AI outsmarted the judges. So the game of Go, really popular in China, is one of the most complex games there is. So when DeepMind's artificial intelligence known as AlphaGo achieved the groundbreaking result of beating the world's best Go champion, the world took notice. In 2016, AI outsmarted humans. And the triumph was particularly significant because the game of Go has so many possible outcomes, way, way, way more than chess, that it seemed like something that no brute force computational method could ever tackle. But AlphaGo used some cutting edge machine learning techniques, including both supervised learning and reinforcement learning. Basically, it watched a bunch of human Go players play, and it learned, it tuned its parameters each time, that's what machine learning does, is it learns from input data how to play the game and what moves these experts were making, which gave it a foundational understanding of how the pieces move and what the techniques are and like what's the game all about. So that's the machine learning half of the AI, and then came the reinforcement learning, the second half. And in this stage, the AI that knew how to play the game from the experts just played itself millions and millions of times. Yeah, seriously, it's just like 
the same person on both sides of the table. It learned from its mistakes when it lost, it learned from its wins when it wins, but it never sleeps and it can play games in seconds and it can just do them 24 seven all day long until it's a superhuman player. Now in the US, I feel like it didn't hit us quite as badly, but in China, this was broadcast on state media and this completely changed the entire country's view on AI. The way that it played really intrigued people. Like sometimes early in the game, it made maneuvers that you would think were really bad and most experts would say, don't do. But somehow in the long run, it had this long-term vision of how it was all gonna come together and that's the way it would win these games, which just emphasizes the creativity and the novel insights that it was able to find this way, making it an even more impressive way to outsmart humans. But it's more than just fun and games because when AI was asked to help detect breast cancer, once again, it outsmarted humans. Google started a collaboration with leading cancer researchers. And together they built a system that was meant to detect breast cancer in mammograms. Mammograms are an imaging technique and the subtle patterns in the images are one of the earliest ways that we can find breast cancer. But even for experts, a lot of these images can be challenging to interpret. And when they're misinterpreted, you might have a false negative where cancer is in the image somewhere, but it's missed. Or a false positive where something benign that's just naturally part of the image is actually flagged as cancerous. And in both cases, you can imagine how bad the consequences are. So even a minor improvement, even if that just means augmenting the person who's looking at the image, means a huge positive impact in society. And when put to the test, Google's AI system demonstrated remarkable improvements. The model outperformed human radiologists and reduced false negatives by 9.4% and false positives by 5.7%. Now surely artificial intelligence can't outsmart human humans at poker, because poker involves bluffing and human emotions and reading people's face. You've got so many subtle human things going on there. But as the story of this video goes, yeah, AI can outsmart humans at poker. Carnegie Mellon University has actually come up with two different AI systems and they're both superhuman at poker. And interestingly, the primary breakthrough that makes these AI systems better than some of the previous ones is its ability to compute what they call a blueprint for how to play the game in real time. So it gets updated as the game goes on. It it doesn't just have a strategy or it isn't trained on when you see this, react this way. It starts to sense how the players are playing and what the strategy should be based on how things are unfolding. And this real-time strategy is fascinating in its own right, but it's also a different way to create some of these AI-generated game playing machines. And of course, making it so they can do real-time strategy adjustment was important to making it superhuman at poker, but it's also good for other ways that you might want an AI to essentially throw off a human. Strategically making things unpredictable and challenging so you can't read exactly what it is that the AI's intentions are. And to achieve this, they came up with a two-step process. First is the more basic style, a blueprint strategy to guide what the best probabilities are based on the cards that are out on the table. So just basic strategy. And then they put this other layer on top of it, which is called nested subgame solving to recalculate from all of the different strategies that it's learned in the past, what the best one is to play for the next move. So it's like you're learning to play poker, but you're also learning which way to play poker at the same time and using the two in conjunction. And one thing I found super interesting was when it came to like how to decide which strategy to play, they used a special technique called regret-based reasoning, which allowed it to look back on the strategies that it had tried throughout the game and the ones that didn't work, making sure that they're weighted very negative. Just like humans might have regret over some decisions we made and we learn from those situations, it can too. So you might think that a super social game like StarCraft might stay in the realm of human intelligence, but nope, it's another place where artificial intelligence has outsmarted us. Thanks to DeepMind's AI software called AlphaStar, the intricate challenges of this real-time video game have been solved. And it uses something called partial information conditioning, which is really deep reinforcement learning, but the way the StarCraft map works, you can't see everything and you don't always have control over where all the other people are. So it started like a lot of these systems by just emulating the way humans play. Show it a bunch of video and how the controls are being moved in correlation with it, it can pick all that stuff up. Then you do self-play, so you put the same AI, you duplicate it, put it on both sides of the board, you have a play itself, learns from its mistakes and wins over and over again, millions of times. But then you add the partial information component. And in this case, they fed it the raw pixel information because they wanted to make sure like a human who can't see the entire game board, that it didn't know anything outside of that same visual realm. And then with that limitation, they just let it play itself over and over again until it became better than any human has ever been before. Now, another big challenge that artificial intelligence has outsmarted human in is in the realm of protein folding. So all 
us humans and all of our cells, we have DNA. The DNA is read into amino acids. Amino acids fold into proteins. But actually looking at the DNA and predicting the shape of the protein has always been outside of the realm of what scientists could achieve. Until artificial intelligence came along to outsmart us. Traditional methods for figuring out something like this was pretty complicated. It used this technique called X-ray crystallography, which was very time intensive, very expensive, and a little bit wonky. So humans like us came up with something called cryoelectron microscopy, which is supposed to be better, but I still don't understand how any of it works, except the fact that it's good, except it doesn't work on all types of proteins, so there's a lot of limitations. But in contrast, artificial intelligence just decided to skip that process. Powered by deep learning, they taught the AI what amino acids actually get read off the DNA, they showed examples of known protein shapes that came from known amino acid sequences. Once it just learned in its vast mind of parameters how to correlate the two together, they just started feeding it other new amino acids. And then they just ask it to predict the protein shape, which it does, and surprisingly, it's really accurate. This has been a huge scientific challenge for decades, and it's essentially solved now. AlphaFold will go down in history as one of the greatest AI accomplishments ever, and it will directly, and already kind of has directly led to all sorts of medical advancements. Human outsmarted. But what's the point of outsmarting humans if you can't use it to get rich? Well, AI has got us outsmarted in that department too. Because in 2018, AI generated art sold for a whopping $432,500. That's right, in 2018, a painting that was created entirely by an artificial intelligent algorithm sold for $432,500 at a Christie's art auction. The New York Art House presented the painting titled Edmond de Blamy, Blamy? I don't know. As a premier artwork from the French Art Collective. We could pop one of those out of Mid Journey right now. I don't know why mine wouldn't be worth that much, but you know, that, that's the art scene. The art scene's its own thing. I don't get it, but at least I can explain how it worked. So the AI algorithm is a generative art model and it was trained on 15,000 classic portraits, all of them painted between the 14th and the 20th century. Then once the model had all of this learning data, they said, generate me something awesome. And from what the experts say, what they got was indistinguishable from human artwork. But at least for right now, AI still needs our human feedback. So make sure to CAPTCHA that subscribe button and help me get to my next goal of 6,000 subscribers.